In the next part of this section, we're going to be discussing how you can compute the areas of some of these regions while integrating with respect to y instead of x. So we've had a little bit of practice by looking at um, graphing x as a function of y rather than y as a function of x. And now we're going to reverse the role of our integral and think now about how to integrate with respect to y using y as the variable of integration rather than x. So here we're asked to compute the area of the region bounded by the curves x equals minus y squared plus 2 and x equals minus 2y minus 1. So as usual, we want to think about drawing a picture here to see what this region looks like. So we have two functions here, or uh, two ways in which we can think about x as a function of y. So x equals minus y squared plus 2. We know that this is going to be a leftward facing parabola because it's minus y squared. And we know it's going to be shifted to the right two units because we've added two. So minus y squared plus 2 looks something like this. Oops. Here we go. Cool. Uh, next up, we have the function. So this is x equals minus y squared plus 2. Uh, next up, we have the function x equals minus 2y minus 1. Uh, if we want to think about what's going on here, maybe we want to think about, well, this is going to be a straight line. Uh, when y is equal to 0, uh, x is going to be equal to minus 1. So we have a point somewhere over here. And when x equals 0, uh, we are going to have y equal to minus 1 half. So somewhere down here, and then we want to uh, draw this picture, and we're, uh, we are going to have a straight line here. And actually, I'm going to change the scale a little bit, um, and maybe, maybe put y equals minus 1 half down here so that we have a, a slightly better drawing. Fortunately, I didn't draw these very well, but that is okay. So let's see. So we have... Uh, this situation here and so we can see then that the area that I'm interested in computing which is just bounded by the red and green curves this time is this area in here so if I want to compute this uh, this purple area here I maybe want to first think about integrating with respect to X and I would see that if I were to do that, I would have to uh, first kind of find these uh, two intersection points here. And then I would need to integrate from this upper function to this, uh, the upper function minus the lower function along this kind of first half here. And that's not so bad. I know that the upper function is red and the lower function is green. Um, but maybe the tricky thing here is the second half of this interval where the upper bound and the lower bound seem to be given by the same formula, uh, that x equals minus y squared plus 2. And that's going to be particularly tricky. Um, we're, we're not entirely sure how to uh, use the same function as the upper bound and the lower bound. So maybe a little bit easier would be, instead of thinking about this in terms of vertical slices, let's think about this in terms of horizontal slices. So in this case, I want to, again, integrate the larger function minus the smaller. But now I'm thinking about the larger function as meaning larger x values, and the smaller function as meaning smaller y values. So I want to integrate uh, the uh, x values of the red function minus the x values of the green function. So let's go ahead and write that down. I want to integrate, uh, we said x values of the red function, so that's minus y squared plus 2. I want to subtract away the x values of the green function. The x values of the green function are minus 2y minus 1. And we said subtract. And we're looking at y as the variable of integration here. So when we're looking for the limits of integration, we want to think about what y values am I integrating from and to. In other words, what are the y values of these intersection points? Well, fortunately, we uh, can figure those out fairly easily because those are the points where the two uh, curves share the same x values. So I'm looking for solutions here to minus y squared plus 2 
equals minus 2y minus 1. Adding or subtracting everything over to the right hand side is going to give me 0 equals y squared. Uh, I have minus 2y here and I will be uh, I'll have a constant term of minus 3. This factors as y minus 3 times y plus 1. And so I'm told that the, uh, or I figure out, I guess, that the two y values that I'm looking for here are y equals minus 1 and y equals 3. Great. So uh, I know that I want to integrate from the smaller y value up to the larger y value. So we're looking here for, integral, for the integral from minus 1 to 3 of minus y squared plus 2 minus minus 2y minus 1 dy. Great, so now that we have written down a formula, we can actually do this computation and we can think about this. Uh, maybe we want to simplify the integrand first. So I have a minus y squared here. Uh, let's see, the term on y is plus 2y and uh, I have a 2 minus a minus 1, which is plus 3. Integrating, I get minus y cubed over 3 plus y squared plus 3, evaluated from minus 1 to 3. And if you plug this into your calculator, you end up getting about 6.67. So we find that the area here between these two curves is about 6.67 square units. Great, let's do another example. So this time we want to compute the area of the region bounded by the x-axis and the curves y equals minus x squared plus 3 and y equals minus x plus 1. You might remember that this is uh, one of the earlier examples. I believe it's example 5, but I don't remember uh, off the top of my head exactly what it is. And what we were computing here was the area of this region. We had this being uh, minus y squared or minus x squared plus 3 and we also had the line uh, minus x plus 1 and that looks something like this oops looks something like this and we wanted to compute this area here so previously we did this by integrating with respect to x and we broke uh, up this region into two pieces uh, kind of depending on what this intersection was here and I believe we found that this intersection occurred at the x value minus 1 and if you plug in minus 1 into either of these two formulas you find that the corresponding y value is 2. So instead, maybe let's think about doing this integral with respect to y now, thinking about splitting this up into, uh, into thinking of maybe instead of splitting it up, we want to think about this as using horizontal slices instead of vertical slices. So if I'm doing that, then I want to integrate from the smaller y value to the larger. And maybe the, the one thing to notice here is that on this interval between y equals 0 and y equals 2, the green function has larger x values than the red function. So I don't need to split up this interval from 0 to 2 into any different pieces. I'm always going to have the larger uh, x value being green and the smaller x value being red. So here I can uh, integrate from 0 to 2 because 0 is my smallest y value, 2 is my largest y value. The problem is, uh, or the, maybe the tricky thing for this approach, is going to be solving for y, or solving for x in terms of y. Because in order to do this integral with respect to y, I need to take my x values of the green function minus the x values of the red function. Well, the x values of the green function are fairly easy to find because I have this equation y equals minus x plus 1, which becomes uh, x equals 1 minus y. So that's pretty straightforward, and I know that's going to be the larger of the two x values. So I'll be looking at 1 minus y minus some kind of uh, x values for my red function here, dy. And the 
x values for my red function are a little bit trickier to solve for because I have this uh, expression y equals uh, minus x squared plus 3 and well I can subtract I can I can get x squared equals uh, 3 minus y fairly easily and then we have x equals square root of 3 minus y but we're not sure maybe whether we're taking the positive or the negative square root here and in order to answer this question we're going to go back to our graph and notice that all of the x values here are negative. Every x value uh, that we're treating as the lower bound of my uh, integral here is, or that we're treating as the lower uh, bound on the x values of this region, all of those x values are less than zero. So that tells me that the formula that I'm looking for here involves negative x values, so I'm looking for the negative square root of 3 minus y. So with those as my x values of the red curve on the region that I'm interested in, I'm looking at minus root 3 minus y. And this is a little bit of a tricky integral. Maybe what I want to do here is I want to work on doing a u substitution, because the tricky thing is dealing with this 3 minus y under the square root. So let's let u equal 3 minus y which tells me that du dy is minus 1, or that minus du equals dy. And now we want to go through and make this substitution. The tricky thing is going to be that 1 minus y there, but I notice if I subtract 2 from both sides of this um, u equals 3 minus y equation, I get u minus 2 equals 1 minus y. So I can replace that 1 minus y by a u minus 2. Great. So let's uh, actually do that. So I'm integrating from y equals 0. Remember to include these y's here to remind yourself not to substitute them for u's later. Uh, let's see. So 1 minus y uh, is going to be that u minus 2. Uh, let's see. I've got a plus the square root because I'm taking uh, minus the negative there. 3 minus y I can replace by u and dy I can replace by minus du. Great. Uh, so now this integral looks a lot easier to do because I know how to integrate u. It's u squared over 2. I know how to integrate minus 2. Oh, and we've got that minus sign sticking around from the uh, minus du. So let's see. So u squared over 2, uh, integrating minus 2 gives me minus 2u. Integrating uh, u, the square root of u, which I know to be u to the 1 half, gives me u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. And I want to evaluate from y equals 0 to y equals 2. Maybe it would be actually easier to convert these uh, values into u values. y equals 0, I know, corresponds to u equals 3. And y equals 2, I know, corresponds to u equals 1. And so we have the integral, and so we want to evaluate this expression from 1 to 3, or from 3 to 1, my bad. And if you take the time to actually plug those numbers into your calculator, you get about, uh, well, it's going to turn out to be about 2.80. And if you go back and compare this uh, to the previous example, which was the same problem, you'll find out that. In fact, uh, this was the exact same answer that we got before. So it doesn't matter whether we approach this problem by thinking about it uh, from uh, the perspective of integrating with respect to x, where we're using these vertical slices to compute the integral, or integrating with respect to y, where we're using these horizontal slices to compute the integral. Uh, so let's see. So maybe let's think about uh, these two different approaches here and some of the different advantages or disadvantages to doing them. So uh, we want to compare examples 5 to example 10. And uh, one of the nice things about example 5 uh, was that the integral was a little bit easier to do. Integral was easier. We were just integrating some polynomial. We didn't need any kind of u substitution there. Uh, but we had to deal with the uh, bounds of integration were harder.
for example 10, uh, the integral was a little harder. We had to do a u sub. Uh, but the bounds were much easier. We didn't have to break it up into two different integrals. Uh, so that was a nice feature of integrating with respect to y there. So with the fact that these two approaches come with their own pros and cons, maybe we want some general guidelines for deciding which strategy to use. Uh, so so some, some good times to integrate with respect to x. So typically we abbreviate with respect to as WRT because that's a phrase that we use a lot. So integrate with respect to x. Uh, this is a, a good uh, thing to think about if you have vertical lines on the boundary, i.e. if your boundary looks something like uh, maybe you have some curve there, but you have some vertical lines composing the boundary, because then what you can do is you can just integrate from x equals some number to x equals some other number, and uh, you probably have expressions for these guys as functions of x. So that's uh, one nice feature, another, or one nice uh, instance in which we want to integrate with respect to x. Another is if uh, the boundary uh, lines fail the horizontal line test. So the reason for this, what I mean by the horizontal line test here is the opposite of the vertical line test in the sense that uh, a curve fails the horizontal line test if when I draw a horizontal line it intersects the uh, curve in multiple places. So uh, something like this fails the horizontal line test because uh, a horizontal line intersects it in a couple different places there. Um, and the reason that we want to integrate with respect to x when we have a boundary line that fails the horizontal line test is that it's going to be very hard to integrate with respect to y because this thing here is not going to be a nice, we're not going to be able to treat it nicely at, where x is a function of y. So integrating with respect to x is kind of the one of the few options that we have here. Uh, integrating with respect to y is going to be, you can guess, kind of the uh, kind of the opposite. Integrate with respect to y. So we're going to want to do this when there are horizontal lines on the boundary. And uh, when there are, uh, when the boundary lines uh, fail the vertical line test. Uh, and again, kind of the reason for this is that horizontal lines uh, look a lot like y equals some number, and so integrating is going to be nice, uh, or it, the actual integration is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, but uh, and the boundary lines failing the vertical line test means that it's going to be very difficult to think about y as a function of x, because failing the vertical line test means that you can't write y as a function of x. So here uh, are some general guidelines. Of course, these aren't perfect. In some cases, you'll want to integrate with respect to x, even if maybe you don't have a vertical line on your boundary, uh, or, if, or if your boundary lines maybe pass the, the horizontal line test. Um, but in general, these are some good places to start, and you can uh, modify your strategy according to the particular type of problem.